first thing you notice is the smell. As you pop the hatch, the apparatus of Qualish, the gnome leads you up the ladder. And you see high above you the ceiling of an enormous cavern, faintly glowing green lichen. And in the distance, the twinkling stars of lights from houses. You notice the eerie lights on the shore, and then you notice the skulls hovering above, their glowing green eyes staring at you. You are in Skullport, home to underworld Denzians and abominations of the Underdark, set miles and miles beneath water deep the underground river. Hello, welcome to another One Shot Hot Shots. My name is Robert Peak. I'll be your dungeon master. We're going to play a self-contained adventure for you and uh, then chat about it a little bit afterward. But first, we'll be right back after we introduce our players. <laughs> yeah, I feel well done. So uh, let us hit the dance floor. Positions. Oh, by the way, uh, th we are being followed. <laughs> you guys are doing wonderful. Nobody bites my drinking buddy. I love killing creatures, but making them run in fear feels pretty good too. Welcome back. So you don't have your tank this time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one guy short. You're a man down, a rather large half orc of a man down, Gideon. Um, that morning, although he was meant to be with you, uh, you, uh, you found um, that Erky uh, was face up under a pile of bagel crumbs. He had completely gorged himself the night before. Uh, and was unable to join this adventure. This adventure being uh, a mission given to you, Gideon, uh, by your faction. So um, uh, Lord Oryx, a rather prominent uh, member of the Zentarum, called you into his private chambers and asked that you would do this favor for him, this small favor. You see, they had been carrying a precious item from the far east for a while and um, needed your help in just making the final, the final uh, delivery of this item. He opens up a box and in it you see a beautiful egg, kind of um, slightly um, translucent and inside it's a sort of, sort of fleshy color. He's not sure what creature laid this egg. He only knows that the egg is destined to be delivered to the blind, a great ancient blind beholder who makes his lair in Skullport. And of course, your buddy and mine, Marshall, has been to Skullport before and even met the blind, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Past. yep. So it seems only obvious that you would invite your good friend to come with you on this jolly journey into one of the darkest, dankest, and stinkiest places in all of Faerun. And so you find yourselves, unless you have any questions for Lord Oryx or anyone else, you find yourselves at the submarine of Warren Baron. The hatch popped. The dock beside you and shady figures moving to and fro 
and the flickering green light of the magical lanterns of Skullport. Well, uh, I don't know about you, darling, but I think it must be a strike of luck that you have already met uh, this uh, this person we're supposed to be meeting. Uh, the blind, uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, I don't know if I would call it luck as much as just a matter of circumstance. And I can definitely tell you I would not call the blind a person. It is something else. Mm-hmm. And uh, how how did uh, this meeting with, uh, with the blind go? I hope it was uh, beneficial. Um, it was, actually. It was actually very helpful. And um, with all the humility I could muster, it did come at a great personal sacrifice to me. You see, the blind requires payment for information. And the type of payment it requires are things of a magical nature. And I happen to find myself in possession of a magically imbued hammer that um, I willingly gave to the blind to help my compatriots together to get some information. Information I probably couldn't even remember or recall to you right now. But at the time, it was seemed to be very important. Mm-hmm. So you ended on a good note. This is fortunate. Else it might have been uh, uh, a tense com- uh, tense meeting we'll be having. I would say, yes, I would agree, Gideon. I would say that uh, the way that it ended, the way that it happened, it probably was, at least from my understanding, left on a good note. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't happen to have uh, any second uh, hammer or anything you could gift him a second time? No, I... <laughs> There is a second hammer. I do have a second hammer, but oh. it was part of a set and I've already broken it up and I, I worry about the nature of, um, I don't know. I guess we. I, sh- I guess what I'm trying to say is like, let's cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, or not darling, we'll figure something out. Uh, yeah. yeah. You recall that Lord Oryx also mentioned to you that as much as you must keep this egg safe, it's also important to deliver it to the blind before it hatches. And so you're keeping an eye on the egg. Who has possession of the egg, by the way, at the moment? Uh, doesn't matter to me. I would say I'll hold on to it. Maybe that way, because if anything comes to it, I'll say, well, Gideon, Given what I can tell you about Skullport, it might be best for you to have uh, all your facilities and not have to worry about this. If anything, mm-hmm. I can hunker down and buy some time. But I, mm-hmm. um, if we come into a situation that you need to be free of any encumbrance, I feel that it may be best if I carry it. Mm-hmm. If you trust me with that. Mm-hmm. Of course I trust you. You are a friend of me and you are most, uh, most uh, generous and uh, to um, uh, consider this. Excellent. Um, how how large is the egg, Robert? It's a pretty good sized egg. It's um, certainly bigger than a kind of American softball and slightly sort of elongated, but the size maybe of an ostrich egg, something like okay. that. Yeah. And what, very, is it, what, is, what does it look like? Well, it's very shiny on the outside. It almost looks like it could have an outer layer of like glass or something like that. Uh, but um, beneath that, you know, immediate surface, it's sort of flesh toned, sort of peachy colored. Um, every once in a while, you think you see a slight sort of movement just, just under the surface of it. Um, yeah, as though maybe someone put a sort of flesh, damp flesh colored rag into uh, a glass globe, and when you shake or agitate it, it sort of sloshes in there slightly. Gotcha. All right, I'll secure it in my pack. Maybe I'll wrap it in some cloth or something and put it inside my pack. I don't. I don't want yolk all over my stuff. You know. <laughs> it is oh, a curious yolk. thing, um, but uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go meet the crowd. <laughs> Indeed, and you find yourself outside um, a a familiar establishment to you, Marshall, the Nibbling Quipper, Mm. a small and seedy tavern. You've heard rumor that the blind has recently changed residence, no longer 
in the wonderful um, sort of palatial mansion that you met him in before. Um, he has he has changed his base of operations. You're hoping you can get some information about where on earth that is these days. So the tavern doors swing open, open, and it's just a kind of general low murmur and hubbub as there are uh, patrons at the bar. And of course, the big feature of the nibbling quipper, uh, this big pond in the middle where uh, patrons occasionally throw the odd bit of scrap or bone. And you see a flurry, a flash of water as little piranha-like quippers finish off the remains. Yeah, um, I feel um, compelled to follow my character's uh, floor because uh, specific, it's one of his floors floor specifically say he cannot enter and establish him without making, making an entrance. So, uh, of course, once, uh, yes, once the uh, Gideon enters the, uh, the establishment, he looks around, it's not his usual crowd, of, uh, certainly. Um, but he's going to call attention to himself. He's going to uh, uh, speak or uh, yell out lo loudly and say, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, good people of Skullboards, please indulge me discuss uh, and please indulge me and answer this. Uh, have you ever heard of the traveling trooper, the uh, Gideon the Gilded? Yes? No? How's this? <laughs> Disturbing or drink crash. <laughs> oh, Gideon the... About to be Gideon the throne out of the tavern. <laughs> One of them mutters back. Mm -hmm. And they go back about their business, most of them more or less ignoring you, much to mm -hmm. your chagrin. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Marshall looked at Gideon like, there's not much appreciation for the arts here, I'm afraid, my friend. I've noticed it is a tough crowd, but so it looks like I'm gonna, just going to have to do my best. Let us start with a tune that you all must be familiar with. Of, and he's just going to start uh, playing his uh, lute harp, uh, starting a performance at last a minute. Fantastic. I will give you an inspiration point <laughs> hey. for storming the tavern. <laughs> yeah. Full Marshall, Marshall just going to run charm. to get a drink while he's doing Once, yeah, once Marshall sees plan. a loot come out, <laughs> he's go to the bar. as soon as the loot yeah. comes out, <laughs> the cleric is gone. Okay. All right, Marshall, you sidle up to the bar, and Gideon, go ahead and, go ahead and give, me a, give me a performance check, or are you casting a spell with that one minute of performance time? Um. Yeah, I think I might. So I am using uh, enthralling performance. So after I, if I manage to play for a minute, uh, I'm going to be choosing targets to uh, uh, cast charm on. All right. If you manage to play for a minute, you can pick some targets to charm. Meanwhile, the uh, natives are getting a bit restless and agitated. They, uh, uh, one of them ceases throwing bits of food into the pond and begins throwing bits of food at your feet. Give me a performance <laughs> check, Gideon. Let's see how you'd hold up under this level of heckling. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was not that good. Um, 17. 17 is not bad. Okay. It's a bad roll. <laughs> and uh, yes, you're starting to turn the tides. I'm going to call that one one success. 20 seconds in, uh, you're doing you're doing okay for yourself. Uh, but then at this point, um, one of the the ladies uh, at the uh, tavern who was doing a little dance and earning a little uh, coin for doing so, seems turns to you slightly resentfully, and says. I can't tell if he's a man or a woman. Give me another performance check. See if you can shirk off this heckling. Marshall, just giggling in all this. <laughs> uh, unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. Okay, I'm going to call that a second success. You're doing well. You're 40 seconds in. If you can score one more success, uh, the natives will not necessarily pounce on you. Uh, but this time, a couple of chaps uh, at the far end of the tavern come forward and they take off their boots. And it looks like they're going to be throwing their footwear at you. Oh dear. Unless you really do well. All right, third performance check. How are we do? Roll good. No. Um, 17 again. 17 is going to be good enough. It's a tough <laughs> crowd. 
but not impossible as you hit some of your signature chords on this familiar tune. They sort of slump down and begin lacing their boots back onto their feet. Meanwhile, Marshall, over at the bar, you can go ahead and uh, you feel something. You feel something. It is the egg uh, in your possession sort of slightly starting to twitch and rattle. And with that, go ahead and give me a D10. Uh-oh. Three. Three. And give me a wisdom savings throw. Nat 20. Nat 20. Not a problem. You feel a momentary chill pass over you. Um, and you know that it has emanated from the egg itself. It is sort of stirring in there. Um, it is clear that all is all is not right. You feel slightly unsettled, but you still are resolved in your mission to get this thing to the blind before it hatches. And I um, talk to the barkeep and ask him if he knows anything about the blind new residents. The blind, eh? What would you want with the blind? Um, so we have. An unfinished conversation, and I'd like ah. to finish it. The blind isn't much of a conversationalist to hear folks tell it. More of a mad rambler. Yeah, I can see that. But in all your time here, and lately, have you ever heard a story of someone just making the blind talk a lot? Mm. Most that try to win the blind's favor end up... <sighs> he blows some dust off of one of the glasses nearby. Well, like dust. Well, we all come from the dust, my brother, and I am not afraid to return to it. So if you have any information that might help us that would know, or at least a person that might know where the blind might be, I would greatly appreciate it. Ah, I see. You know, I'm awfully thirsty. If you could perhaps uh, assist me in a drink of my own or for a couple of my friends, it might wet my throat enough that I could uh, say a few words about that. Absolutely. I mean, we are in the right place for that, aren't we? And Marshall just throws some coin out for... All drink right. for him and enough for him and uh, his friends. Great. He'll take a couple of gold pieces from you. All right. All right. Business, is it trade? Bringing something to the blind or taking something away for a bit of coin, are we? I don't actually know the particulars. I, you should understand that's how we, things are usually done around here, I believe. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I understand. He um, seems to be looking around a, a little bit. Um, well, well, they say the blinds moved recently, moved to a new residence. And with your passive insight, Marshall, of 15, he starts to get a little uneasy. Uh, you notice it looks like he's maybe signaling to one or two of the guys uh, a little further back, uh, further back, deeper into the tavern. Um, and you sense the presence. One guy out the corner of your eye, um, a, a big stout fellow, um, with a bald head and a jaw bone over his own face. It looks perhaps like the jaw of a shark or some kind of big fish because there's several rows of teeth. He's wearing it like armor over his own jaw. And he begins of gently moving towards you. It'll take a lot of coin to get the blind to talk. I hope you've come prepared with a hefty amount of coin on you today. <clears throat> okay. Um, how many do I notice you said, Rick? About a couple? 
All right, you're starting to get nervous. All right, go ahead and give me uh, give me a wisdom perception check. Let's see, let's see how you do with that. Uh, meanwhile, Gideon, who you want to charm? Um, the barkeep, the dancer, and I, I can charm a total of five people. So perhaps also the the the, the bootless uh, guys. So yeah, some. Okay. Yeah, fine. All right, you've got the uh, two bootless uh, guys. Uh, you've got um, the barkeep. You've got the dancer. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Wisdom save uh, DC seventeen. DC seventeen whiz for these. Okay. Yeah, that's what I rolled seventeen. Not bad. Well, you're obviously not charmed. So charmed by Gideon. Okay, that's four in total. DC seventeen whiz saves, and let's see how we do. All charmed except the dancer. Oh man, <laughs> that would have been the best one to have. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She is unfortunately not pleased by you taking some of her business away from her in the tavern today. However, the two with the boots come up to you, and they're wiping. Uh, tears out of their eyes, or they seem to be. It's hard to tell because the atmosphere is so smoky and dank and smelly. They may just have soot. I'm Nix, he's Lux, and that was beautiful, I must say. It brought me back to my childhood, it did. Isn't that right, Lux? Sorry, Nix, that's right. That's right, when we were boys together. Little boys playing out on the beautiful waters. Oh, what was it called again? What was the name of that one? I don't know the name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say a name. I don't know its name. Um, uh, Dancing on the Lake. Oh, Dancing yes. on the Lake. I love <laughs> Dancing on the Lake. Yes, it brought me right back to my boyhood. Right back to sailing little boats out on the black water. You are too oh. kind. I'm, I am... Uh, uh, I'm even touched that I was able to convince you after all. Of the... Can we buy you a drink? Can we buy you a drink? Um, well, why don't you um, drink and be merry, gentlemen, and uh, don't forget to t tip your waitress. And uh, yeah, and he's gonna um, take his stuff. I don't know if uh, he was able to, to get any coins or anything, but uh, else he's gonna take a few silver pieces or something from himself and approach the dancer. Yeah, you uh, you earn, um, out of all of that, you earn three silver pieces. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a tight crowd. <clears throat> yeah, I'll Excellent. just add uh, a little bit silver to that, and then I'm going to approach the dancer uh, <clears throat> and say, uh, excuse me, miss, uh, I do not uh, mean to... Um, uh, to to mus muscle in on your uh, on your place if this is uh, your usual uh, uh, usual place. Um, I I heard uh, you were saying something during my performance, that, and I wanted to a simply ask, answer your question. Uh, I am first and foremost a gentleman, and uh, hands the lets the coins fall in front in front of the table. <laughs> I see. Wow. Ha. I see. Hmm. All right. Well, I was going to say I didn't see much muscle in you, but uh, a gentleman's gifts are always welcome here. She bends down and takes up the coins into her apron. His fancy talk, not so welcome. She still is eyeing you suspiciously. I see you have, uh, you can see right through me. I am indeed uh, not from around here, but uh, I see you know your way around. So I thought perhaps uh, I should, I could come sit here with you and can have a talk. All right, pretty boy. We can have a talk. If you talk too much, I'm going to have to go sit somewhere else. All right, Marshall, how do you do with your perception? Uh, one seven, 17. All right, 17. Uh, they're definitely closing in on you. Uh, there's three of them in total, one behind you and one on either side of you, very casually just sort of sliding in, very interested to hear out one ear what you're bringing to the blind and um, whether it might involve some, some loose change, some coin that happens to be on you at the time. Okay. Um, 
I do notice that the do I see anyone's food anywhere? Yeah, uh, the uh, the guy off to the left with curly uh, red hair has a a small clay dish uh, full of pickled quippers, the kind of the kind of delicacy of the place, and he is he is plucking them out and slurping them down rather loudly beside you as you uh, carry on talking to Bronus the barkeep. Go on, go on, don't let me stop you. Uh, you probably don't want to say if you've brought any coin. I understand. Well, well, that's fine. So the, um, the blind, the blind. Yes, he's a mysterious creature, the blind. He, um, he's uh, not known to talk much to outsiders, as it were. And um, <clears throat> are you really okay, dear? Do your friends that are going to join us would they like a drink as well? Oh yes, yes. Oh chaps, uh, this uh, fellow has brought nicely uh, bought drinks for all of us. He uh, clearly has some coin to spare and uh, was most generous with it with me recently. Is that I, right? Yeah, it actually. <laughs> job, okay. Yeah, actually, I uh, I I've been known to uh, partake of places like this. In fact, I believe there is a place not that far from here that take these little quippers, these fascinating things you have here. Do do don't they they cook them? They bread them and fry them. I see your friend over here has these pickled ones. You guys have the ability to make this sort of food here. Oh, well, I suppose we could fry them, but that's more of a surface world kind of thing to do Is to it? them. Oh, oh but I like that feel, kind of thing around here. I just thought with all the availability of quippers here, that might be something to do. I, I find I'm very fond of it. Uh, very much so. Um, yeah. You know what? Let me let me tell you guys a little bit about what's going on. And Marshall Eckley. They lean in, the me? three of them, and the one behind the bar. They're all around you and they're all ears. I um uh, I grow these birds that lay eggs and the blind heard about it and he just has to have one of these eggs, some of these eggs. It's the weirdest thing. They called us over here. We're on his employ, I think even under contract. I don't even remember exactly the particular my friend my friend over there he handles all the details of the business. I just kinda I'm I'm along for the fun. I don't know any details. But I do know that um essentially we went we're bringing some produce and farm stuff to them. There's really not a lot of value to it. I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it seems like someone went to the market and now we've been asked to deliver the stuff for the market, some sort of like instantaneous cart of food or some sort. I don't understand. Eggs, the jawbone says. Eggs, show us an egg then. Show us where your eggs are. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And uh, can I kind of look at, uh, see? can I see what Gideon's? Can you can Gideon see here? Gideon. Gideon, uh, <laughs> It's is uh, sitting close to Lorana the dancer, although Lorana still has her arms folded. Yeah. And looks as though if Gideon says even one word, she's storming off. Okay. All right, Marshall will just flip through his pack. Uh, while it's in the pack, I don't want to pull the. I don't want to be too dramatic with the egg, like unwrapping it. Mm -hmm. I'll try to unwrap it in the pack, and I'll just pull out the egg. And as you pull out the egg, go ahead and give me a D10. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Gideon got a bit sidetracked. But in this <laughs> yes. So, so yes. He's, he's yes. not really uh, keeping six. Eye six. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um, go ahead and uh, give me a strength savings throw, and I'm going to do the same <laughs> for the other four at the bar. Oh, boy. <laughs> Better roll high. We should, we should have uh, made some kind of safe word or something, an alarm. Yeah. <laughs> something. Some sort of, some sort of a... 
Oh. Um, 16. Rolled high. 16 is pretty good. Both you and the barkeep um, managed to um, shake off a strange, funny feeling as though you're being lifted up by invisible hands. The other three, the jawbone and the quipper slurper and the little guy behind you who was ready to pounce, are lifted off their feet and begin levitating up. They're, they're a couple feet off the air uh, levitating. Um, and um, all of a sudden, they are then thrown back and they go flying and each of them uh, goes flying one into a table. Uh, one goes flying actually right onto the table uh, where Lorana and Gideon um, <laughs> are cavorting. Um, and and meanwhile, I'm just holding the egg up like this. Holding the egg up and they just, they just kind of explode in three directions. The third one sort of tumbles and narrowly misses falling into the pond full of quippers. And uh, the barkeep cries out, What is this magic? I told you, it's an egg that the blind is requesting. So maybe it'd be best if we got this to him. Out! Yeah. Out of my tavern now! You and your pretty friend, out! Excuse me, miss. I, I think this is my cue to leave. What, no tip? <laughs> I'll leave her with uh, seven, uh, ten silver in total. Ten silver, very nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hope I see you again then, she says. All right. Meanwhile, the, the all of the patrons are beginning to gather around. The three chaps have dusted themselves off. And the uh, the big guy with the jawbone looks at you. He says, you've made an enemy of the mandibles. You better start running. Is that one of the, one of the guys that I managed to charm? He is one of the guys that you. Uh, no, he's not one of the guys you managed to charm. Nick locks the barkeep and are are the three. Unfortunately, he is not one of the ones you have charmed. All right. Well, I'll put the egg in, and I'll be like, "All right. Well, I guess we'll have to go somewhere else." And I'll start walking out. Surface workers, mm -hmm. I tell you, they're all the same. They smell terrible too. Hmm. Well, it was uh, great performing for you. Perhaps I'll see you again some other time. Thank you and good night. Not if we see you first. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, you are back out on the docks. It is eerily quiet, and the green eyes of the skulls are scanning the place. You know, they serve as sentries or guards here against any ill doing. Um, Gideon. Perhaps we should discuss something really quick here. Um, since I've been in possession of this egg, strange feelings have been washing over me, and now something very strange happened. I think that we should not make anything but proper haste to try to get this to where it needs to go. Um, and one thing to note, I can tell you about Skullport, if we do get in trouble, try to take it outside because the sentries can see and that might give you some protection mm -hmm. because there's no no fighting that's allowed out on Skullport streets mm -hmm. very well um no. yeah well thank you uh father marshall very much preach appreciate your uh, sound advice um i must have, uh, I, uh, I must say i did not uh, expect you to uh, uh, to outdo me and, and do pull on a bigger show than, than me inside there. Uh, what was uh, was that? What was that exactly that happened? I I will say that of the two of us, I never felt that I would be the one to get us thrown out of a tavern. Um, however, I felt a little bit of um, danger there, and I thought I might be able to talk my way out of it. But I suppose that um, I do not have your velvet tongue for this sort of thing and further i suppose that this egg has a mind of its own mm -hmm. say no more father um this is this charge was uh yeah is in both our hands so uh, indeed let us uh let us stick together this in a dark, this is indeed a very uh, tough crowd so yeah let's try another place shall we 
I agree. All right. There is no shortage of taverns along the docks. It seems to be the primary occupation of the people who live here to spend their time drinking in them. And uh, as you make your way along, looking for another place to wet your whistle and perhaps um, find out a little bit more information, uh, a girl barefooted with stringy blonde hair uh, comes running up to you. She uh, tugs at Marshall's uh, cloak. Forgive me, sir. Excuse me. Oh, he won't like this. Oh, excuse me, sir. Forgive me. But um, I noticed, I couldn't help but notice. Well, how could you not help notice? You um, dealt very um, well with those uh, mandibles. I was wondering perhaps if um, if I could um, uh, be of some service to you and perhaps apprentice in your ways. Oh, he's not going to like this. He's not going to go for this. Oh, Malark, why I'm are sorry, you doing this? What is, what is your name, child? My name is my name is Malark, and um, oh God, I didn't say I didn't say that impressively enough, did I? My name is my name is my name is Malark, and um, and Malark, I Malark, Malark, yes, Malark. Malark and, take 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 a moment here. I, I, I'm trying to understand what's going on, but you you seem to be very panicked. He's Calm calming down. me down. He's calming I'm me calming down me now, down. isn't he? Yes. Okay, that's probably not good. That probably means he thinks I was hysterical and I've come on too strong. Malark, you always do this. You always... Uh, excuse me, uh, Malark, was there something you wanted? Well, um, just to say that I was very impressed with your display and if I could be of any service to uh, the both of you, um, in exchange for some of your uh, knowledge, skills, and talent. Oh, this is not this is not going very well. Um, I would be happy to uh, support you in such an endeavor, fine sirs. Okay, you're gonna really end it like, there, huh? Do you do you do you hear stories of adventurers? I stories. see adventurers come and go all throughout these parts. Most of them, yeah, but you, don't, you better believe most of them, all of them, pretty much all of them, dismiss you out of hand as a, as, a, as a silly fool who talks to herself. But but these might be different. That's why we're thinking these might be different. Uh, yes, I hear stories, all kinds of stories and tales all about these lands, and I could be of some service to you, sir. Of course, you could be of some service to him, sir. Right. Not like you, you live here in Skullport? All my life, sir. All my life. And what is it you do here? I mostly, what is it I do? Gosh, uh, don't tell him that you are a pickpocket. That would be very bad. He might be with the authority. Looks, look, he looks like, a, looks like a holy man of some kind. They don't like that. Uh, I'm in imports and exports, sir. Imports and exports. Not like you are aware that we can hear you when you're talking to yourself, right? What is he saying? He's saying that he thinks I'm talking to myself. Why would he say I think I'm talking to myself? I am... Okay, well, we've got to respond with something. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I understand that you have the psychic powers bestowed to you by your deity that you can hear my very thoughts, sir. And I would like to know more about this great gift that you have. Do you think he's buying it? I don't know if he's buying it. I think he might be buying it. He's probably not buying it. I look at I look at Gideon. I'm mm -hmm. kind of amused and play. Like, <laughs> I'm not buying it, Gideon. I didn't think he was gonna buy it. Oh. Well, uh, I certainly am sold, uh, Malik. Uh, I like you. I like you a lot. I I think you're cutting the right the metal. Um, do you know what what else I like? I like coin. Do you like coin, Malik? Yes, I like coin very much, sir. I like coin very much indeed. I am a big mm. fan of the old round coin, sir. Mm. Oh. So, uh, what about if we make a deal? If uh, what if I if I give you a coin and uh, you give me a piece of information, just a little piece? That sounds like an excellent bargain, sir. I am in fact in imports and exports. If you export mm -hmm. a coin to me, I can import. Uh, information to you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great. Import information. That doesn't even make <laughs> sense, does it? Well, uh, yeah, I, I see that you, um, that you are f from around here and, and uh, you know how to present yourself. And, uh, and I, I really do like you, Malik. So uh, tell me, do you know anything about, and he's like uh, playing with, with a coin between his fingers, do you know anything about uh, the blind? 
Well, it goes into a little bit of a trance, looking at the coin flipping around in your fingers. Oh, he's, she's, she's, he's talking to you. He's talking to you, Malik. Come on, pull it together. The blind. Yes, I do. I do know the blind. The blind recently changed residence. Um, are you looking to do some business, import or export, perhaps, with the blind? I could possibly make an introduction for you of some kind, if that would be of use. That sounds wonderful. Um and and uh, he's gonna just gonna just gonna give him what a coin is gonna get be giving, um, like I don't know, uh, just one gold. Fine. One gold piece, an actual gold piece. Mm -hmm. Malik's hand. She is very impressed indeed. The first thing she does, of course, is bite it to make sure that it is in fact real gold. It's real gold. This is actually real gold. How long has it been since you've actually tasted a real gold piece? This is terrific. Okay, these people don't screw this up, Malik. <laughs> we can do this. Yes, uh, I see that you are very well informed, Malik. Uh, but if you know that the blind one has changed the resident, uh, you wouldn't have to know uh, where or know anyone who knows where. Uh, yes, in fact, I do. I have a piece of information about that that was imparted to me as an import, as it were, from um, a friend of a friend. And I can, in fact, take you to the exact location of the blind. Should that be of use to you, sir? Can I do an insight check? You see a lying or not? Absolutely. Give me an insight check. <laughs> um, I have a very good passive. Uh, um, I got a 18 insight. Very good insight check. Uh, and with that, you think at least Malik believes that she knows where the blind is in residence. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, are you sure that you know where the blind is? Perhaps we can uh, talk to someone else, uh, um, someone, an in-between person. He has doubts. He has doubts. How am I going to prove this to him? Malik, think. Malik, think. Well, you know what? There's two ways to play this. You could actually withhold a bit of, you know, information and say, and say, for example, <clears throat> sir, I know where the blind is and I'm insulted at the insinuation that you would think that I need an intermediary or someone else who knows more than I do to assist us in this venture. I would only ask, sir, for a small sum of payment up front and then a small sum of payment upon the completion of my duty. There need be no middleman in this import or export business that we are transacting here today, sir. You think you bought it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. What say you, Father? I still don't buy it. Oh, but he's, he's not convinced. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Very well. If I were to tell you, sir, that I knew that the previous residence of the blind was one uh, beautiful mansion high up on the uppermost tier. As you look up at uh, Skullport, you see that it's built up into the cliff in all these weird sort of higgledy-piggledy rafters and levels. Uh, over there, in fact, she points. And uh, Marshall, give me an intelligence check. Uh-oh. Dang. All the bad ones today. <laughs> Ooh, that 20. That 20. You recall uh, with some confidence that is the exact former location of the blind. Um, it's hard to forget a creature like that. And it's also hard to forget where I, where I lost my hammer. Indeed. Mm -hmm. You know that hammer is in there um, somewhere. When, when Malik tells me that and, I, and Marshall looks and recognizes all that, Marshall just, without looking what he's doing, just takes out a coin from his... Um, pocket and flicks it over to Malik. All right. I'm convinced. Take us to the blind. Malik catches it in the air. With great pleasure and right away, sir and sir, please follow me. See if you can catch up. See if you can keep up. Here we go. And Malik takes off uh, into the city streets. She is running up rickety stairs and clambering up these makeshift ladders, weaving her way in and out of the vast sort of scaffolding and ramparts uh, and little uh, rickety bridges that uh, cause Skullport to cling to the cliffside of the cavern. Uh, you guys can each give me a, a dex check to see how you do keeping up. 
At the end, then we're going to do some parkour. <laughs> Dude, I, I swear, like when what? it counts, I don't do this, but natural 20. Hey, Not nice. a problem. You, you, actually, you actually get one parkour move in this, <laughs> um, in this, in this venture. So you, you know, a little backflip or a little, you know, palm stand. How did uh, Gideon do with that? 16. 16, you're, gagging, you're lagging a bit behind, get in. You're, you're able to keep up, but you are uh, lagging a bit behind. So, um, Marshall, you are up next to Malark. Uh, when, you, when you round a corner uh, into a little kind of makeshift market square, kind of raised up two levels above um, the, the dank ground of, uh, the, of the Skullport Cavern, um, kind of this makeshift rickety square, um, and a couple of guys in gray cloaks um, immediately, they're about 40 feet away, point at Malark and say, there she is! Thief! After her! And they begin running after Malark. Malark immediately turns uh, and runs down uh, the, the right-hand side uh, of a small kind of alleyway. Um, you are right there with her. Uh, the two men are um, basically at about the same distance at this point as Gideon, and they are running, uh, they are running after you guys. So we're gonna do this um, as a straight up skill check uh, chase. So uh, you can give me either, uh, let's, let's do a dexterity acrobatics for round one. Let's see how you guys fare. I'll do the same for these gray cloaks. I'm just gonna keep rolling that really same dice. <laughs> They're rolling good, and I'm rolling low. Look, I'm gonna end it. You say dex acrobatics? Dex acrobatics as you are flipping around, twisting through the narrow passages of Skullport. Yeah, uh, 14. 14, okay. And a nine. Gideon. A nine. Okay, that's going to be a fail for both of you. Uh, the, uh, the gray cloaks are now between, sort of basically between Gideon and Marshall. Marshall, you're starting to lag behind Malark as she is flipping and twisting around. Um, the, gr the green lights of these weird magical lanterns are flashing as you guys are, are racing, uh, racing down these narrow passageways. Go ahead and give me another dex acrobatics. 15. 15, okay. I'm going to call that a success. Uh, 13, 14. And 14 is not enough. So two fails for Marshall. You continue to lag behind. Gideon, you're catching up. You're sort of neck and neck with these uh, gray cloaks who also are not doing, not doing quite so great. Uh, at this point, um, Gideon, give me a d20. Me? Yeah, d20. D20. A six. A six. Okay. Um, and as you each round uh, the next corner, um, you see um, that there are some bizarre looking underdark animals. They look kind of like sort of giant centipedes uh, and they are in a fight. So there are, there are three or four of them. And they've kind of rushed in and they're sort of tumbling over each other, blocking the passageway. Um, and so you each need to give me, as you round the corner and encounter that, um, either strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics to break through and not take any damage from these weird crawling centipedes that are brawling and in the streets. And Skullport's so weird. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Oh, was it acrobatics or what was the other one? Or strength athletics to try and kind of break through. Mm. Got a nine acrobatics. Nine, 17 okay. In acrobatics. Seventeen. All right, Marshall, you managed to break through, uh, but Gideon, you take three points of piercing damage and can give me a Constitution save. And, uh, yes. I am rolling so low today. A ten. Ten. Not enough. Uh, you are poisoned for the next minute. Which means 
you begin to feel groggy and weird and your subsequent checks are going to be at disadvantage. So everyone mm -hmm. go ahead and give me another dexterity acrobatics check as you go wending your way through the streets trying to keep up with Malarn. Unnatural 20. Unnatural mm -hmm. 20 is going to count as two successes and... No, unnatural. Not oh, natural. unnatural 20. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's just going to count as one success for you, Marshall. You're catching up, starting to do better. Gideon, I got the 14 at this. Advantage. 14 at this. Okay, not quite enough. The two of you are lagging behind, um, but uh, so are the Great Cloaks at this point. Malark uh, is way off in the lead. It's possible that you all might lose her pretty soon if you don't start doing better. Another dex check as you uh, now come across uh, a place where it's clear Malik has leapt from one uh, sort of one little sort of rickety bridge to another across a big chasm. Give me a mm. dex acrobatics check. Yeah. Um, Gideon is not really fond of uh, running around and doing parkour. Uh, can he cheat? Cast a spell. Sure. You have a, <laughs> you have a spell? Lay it on. Yeah, um, he would like to cast um, uh, Dimension Door, uh -huh, teleport absolutely. him himself right next to the um, next to the kid. What and, is and the uh, range for the teleportation? Uh, Five hundred feet, I believe. Five hundred feet. All right. So just before you lose sight of Malark, you're going to try and Dimension Door your way over. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, yes, and so as you see Malark. Uh, jump over this chasm, realizing that it's going to be a very difficult jump for you, especially in your slightly altered state, having taken some damage, some poison from a giant centipede. You dimension door yourself right next to the kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to, uh, yeah, out of nowhere, just so suddenly grab a hold of him, uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna say to him. Uh, uh, I got you, Malik. Uh, don't you worry. And then he casts uh, invisibility on the kid. Oh, I don't know if he has to save unless he wants to, uh, to uh, yes. fail it. He's gonna try and grab the kid. Uh, the kid's going to resist, just not mm -hmm. not realize he's just in a pa she's just in a panic. Mm -hmm. uh, so go ahead and give me a grapple check to see if you can. Um, At you disadvantage. Can hold on. Uh, that's uh, very well either though. Athletics. Strength athletics. Oh. Man, it was a natural 20, but at this, it is um, four. Remember, you have one inspiration point you can use at any time. A. Okay, with a four, you manage to touch Malark, mm -hmm. uh, and you can cast invisibility, but you do not manage to hang on to her. I will, however, put you ahead in the race um, to catch up <laughs> to her. So everyone, go ahead and give me another dex check. Let's see how we're doing in the position. At this point, the gray cloaks have lost her. 11. Oh, uh, wait, I'm, and there's it still a disadvantage. Oh, it's 11. 11 and 11. Okay. Uh, yeah, nat one. <laughs> nat one. Okay. Unfortunately, Gideon and Marshall at this point, uh, Malark being invisible, mm -hmm. being out of your control. Um, seems like um, the last thing you see is a few footprints on the squishy lichen-covered ground, and then suddenly those footprints and all other traces of Malik are gone. The Great Cloaks, however, have lost her as well. Marshall, yeah, you cleared I'm the... I'm going to point the them in the wrong direction. That way! All right. That way! <laughs> uh, give me a... Um, yeah, you can give me a... Uh, actually, you don't even need to give me a, a, a deception check. They're going to just go. They're going to... <laughs> went that way and uh, they round the wrong corner and they are off you find yourselves panting on top of this uh, high ledge overlooking uh, the water and the rest of the city you're, you're about three or four levels up in Skullport um, Malark is nowhere to be seen I'm gonna drop the invisibility spell and my concentration um, but I, I guess I don't see him anywhere well, uh, that didn't uh, go as planned. Drop your, you drop your concentration and uh, give me a wisdom perception check as you do. I rolled good, finally. Um, what is it? Uh, 24. 
24. With a 24, uh, you see a single shoe sticking out from behind a barrel suddenly materialize and come into view. <laughs> it's clear that Malark is hiding behind this barrel and not doing a perfect job of it. You see the tip of her, uh, of her toe, in fact, as she is barefoot. Mm. Well, it looks like uh, we finally lo lost it. Uh, they lost track of us, those uh, cloaked figures. Uh, I guess I will just go, we can go this way and he's going to lead um, Marshall in the direction of the barrel. <laughs> okay. And as you get closer to the barrel, you hear, oh, that was close. That was really close, Malik. We really got to do better next time. I, I wonder where the other two are. Are they still, they're going to pay you some coin. You should go find them. You should go find them and lead them. Back. <clears throat> oh, that was oh. And she pops out from behind the barrel. Excellent. I was just waiting for you. I want to take you to the blind, as I said I did. Those chaps back there are uh, mistaken. It's clearly a case of mistaken identity, and um, there is there is no chance that what they said was in fact true about me, my business being completely legitimate in all ways and respects. Malik, Malik, it's fine, it's fine. You don't have to say anymore. I already like you. Uh, but uh, we are not friends of the Mandibles, so uh, you can speak uh, honestly with us. Oh, good. All right. Well, if I'm really honest, I'm not a friend of the Mandibles either, and I may or may not have at certain points in time um, helped myself to some of the excesses in their profits. You see, they are um, a business um, which has far more than it needs to support itself, and I, being a humble importer and exporter of goods, uh, occasionally take small business loans for myself uh, in the form of bread and cheese and other consumables of that nature, uh, so as to uh, support myself as the entrepreneur that I am. Did they buy it? I think they bought it. Yeah. I'm so glad I worked that, learned that word entrepreneur. It's come in so handy. I just... Gideon, I buy it. Yes? I buy it. You are a good salesman, uh, Malik. Now, show the way. Thank you, sir. Right this way. Malik leads the way. Um, and again, you begin winding up. Um, this time, a spiral staircase um, in the, a half um, sort of crumbled tower. How a how a tower got down here, uh, you don't know, but it's clearly from some other era or time. Um, as you do, you're kicking away little black rats uh, that have infested the stairwell. Um, and finally, you reach uh, a, a plateau there, um, and there is a completely, perfectly circular carved tunnel. The tunnel is absolutely smooth and absolutely straight. You've not seen stonework of this type uh, since you have seen uh, a dwarven tomb, for example. It is absolutely flawless, as though the stone itself were simply melted away in this tubular shape. Is this the place? This, good sirs, is indeed the place beyond you will find the blind and his many uh, supporters who will lead you to the blind to conduct whatever business uh, that is none of my business, sir, that you are here on business to attend to, sirs. Am I understanding, understanding this correct that you will not join us, Malik? Okay. I am afraid, sir, that I am not one um, of the um, uh, the gifts that you have, sir, in the verbal department, and therefore uh, will exempt myself today from this particular venture, so as to so as to save your skin, right? What do you say? So as to allow you to um, conduct your business in a in a uh, straightforward fashion. Straightforward, yeah, that's good. Okay. Is he full of bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> can, yes. can I do some kind of, yeah, insight give check? Me a, or... Give me an insight check. <laughs> and as you're doing that, Marshall, give me a d10. No. Oh, no. That's... All the running and jostling, I'm sure. Is that's that right. Happen? And at this point, you hear tapping from the inside of the egg. I got 23. 23. Uh, Malak is clearly afraid of the blind. I'm trying. She's trying to pretend otherwise. I got an eight. An eight. Okay. 
And um, at this point, all three of you need to give me a dexterity savings throw. Mm -hmm. A natural 20. Uh, 15. 15. Okay. And with that, um, both Malik and Marshall freeze on the spot. You are rooted to the spot and you feel your body beginning to go more and more rigid from within. You are um, beginning to turn to stone. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Gideon, what you notice this? this. Both of them have become completely rigid at this point. Well, I know it is a very dangerous, um, dangerous uh, endeavor that we are undertaking, but... Uh... Why, why did you stop? They are both completely silent, staring at you motionlessly oh, like man. statues. <laughs> and their skin yeah. is beginning to sort of go sort of palish gray. Yeah. Oh, dear. I, <clears throat> I, I recognize what this is, but I don't really have anything I can do. <laughs> no. When your cleric gets hit with one of these things, go south. Um, okay. Uh, now. Is it a spell? It is. Uh, do it, recognize that the spell was cast? No. Um, it is. It is. Um, it is magical, certainly in nature, but it's not necessarily a spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, there was no chanting. I didn't recognize as a spell being cast. No, you uh, just heard tapping from inside the egg as this happened. And at this point. <laughs> Marshall, you can repeat the savings throw. Gideon, bear in mind, you could give your inspiration point, and you also still could, I believe, uh, give a bardic inspiration if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But Malik is going to repeat the save and fail. You get the inspiration, um, Marshall. Okay. And Malik has turned into a statue. Inspiration adds what? D. Oh, it's it's a uh, advantage. It's my uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll use that inspiration. Mm-hmm. Dex save seventeen. Seventeen is just enough. <sighs> you manage to shake off the effects of petrification Idiot. and snap was back the, into life. There is something that was affecting me, turning me into stone. I look at over Malik. How's Malik looking? Malik is a statue yeah. frozen completely in the pose uh, that she last took as she was talking to you or perhaps herself. It's always hard to tell. Uh, but her her mouth is completely motionless now, agape but motionless, and her skin has gone a grayish color, the color of the wet stone of the cavern before you itself. I don't know what's going on. Whatever we're in charge of here seems to be creating a lot of issues. I think it's best if we can get it out of our hands. If this, is where the, if this is where the blind in, let's follow this tunnel and maybe there's a way we can help Malik on the way out. I agree. Let us uh, finish this quickly. Yes. Very good. So into the tunnel. Oh, just before I go, I just want to say a little blessing to Malik. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can hear me, Malik, but may Osiris watch over you. We will be back. All right. You leave Malik rooted to the spot. Mm -hmm. Summon your courage, uh, Father Marshall. Let us proceed. And I would like to bardic inspire him, which is uh, D10 now. Yes, and D10. then I will, put, I will put my hand on Gideon. Like, may we both be inspired and have a guidance on you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. It's the buff twins right here. The mutual admiration <laughs> society here. I love it. I totally love it. All right. Yes. 
The chill is I buff you, you buff me. Yeah. We're a happy <laughs> bunch Come of PCs. Yep, and into the tunnel you go, singing with relief that you are not, in fact, in the same state as Malark is at the moment. Um, you wind your way down the tunnel and soon um, come to what is can only be called as a, a, a guard post. Um, there are two creatures uh, standing guard. Um, they are hooded. I say creatures because you notice their hands and feet, which protrude from their cloaks, are covered in fur, and they have long claws. And from beneath their cloaks, their eyes glow faintly red. What business have you with the blind? So we have arrived at the at the blind's residence. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, he might already be expecting me. Um, Lord uh, Oryx has sent us. Wait here. And the second of the two of them uh, spills off. You notice that the um, the uh, passageway uh, where it seems to dead end is in fact a kind of swirling sort of oculus opens up and it swirls completely open like a camera lens um, and this hooded creature goes back whoosh, it swirls back behind him and the three of you stand there in silence for several minutes the guard not being particularly talkative or friendly and finally it swirls back open again and the creature comes back out what business have you with the blind from Lord Oryx? I would think that you would already be aware of this business. Uh, we are simply um, uh, co couriers. We deliver a package. What is the package? Can I insight check him? Is this the blind spot or, or the, yeah, you can the right like place? Do an insight check, definitely. Blind spot. <laughs> blind spot. <laughs> Um, 28. Yes, 28. This is the blind spot. Is this the blind uh, spot? <laughs> this does appear to be the blind spot. Yeah, the um, the okay. guard um, is certainly going away and talking to somebody and coming back. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you do recall that Lord Oryx mentioned that this this gift originally came uh, from Quigox. Quigox was the uh, uh, the giver of this gift to uh, the blind. Mm -hmm. Do we know what who Quicker Cox is? Not a clue, but it's clear that the blind doesn't seem to know who Lord Oryx is. Mm -hmm. All right. So may, may we proceed? What business have you with the blind? Does does Gideon know the Quig? Or does Marsha know about Quigox, or does is it only Gideon that knows? Ah, uh, yeah, you guys have you guys have probably, I'm guessing, discussed discussed yeah. the nature of the situation. Um, we have a package from Lord Quigox for the blind. What is the nature of the package? And I look over at Gideon and like kind of looking to say like, well, should I pull it out? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it has not been working out for us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it might be the easiest way to answer his question. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um, I back away. <laughs> yeah. Um, Run away. It's, it's, it's an egg. And then Marshall will pull out <clears throat> the egg and unwrap the cloth around it. But as you do, you notice that um, parts of the egg um, are beginning to crack. There are these faint spider web of cracks running uh, all through the egg, just kind of thin filigree of little cracks like lightning from the sky. Very well. Shall I take this? No, no. You wait here. An egg from Quiox. Wait here. And again, the Oculus opens, and again he goes out. And again, there's a long, rather awkward silence as the second one simply stares at you with these small, glowing red eyes. 
Marshal Tispilik, so have you worked here long? <sighs> Do I, can, can I, can I see under his, his hood or whatever? Can I see what kind of uh, creature he is? Give me a perception check, sort of covertly. Uh, 17. Hmm. 17's pretty good. He looks in the face a little bit like a, like a jackal almost. Um, he uh, is clearly only partly sort of humanoid. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. Give me a nature check. Let's see if you know more about this particular creature. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly interested in, the, is if, in if it's a humanoid. I mean, if it's something I might be able to mm, uh, convince okay. to charm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of seven. on the cusp. It's kind of on mm -hmm. the cusp. Uh, with a seven nature check, um, yeah, you're not entirely sure if it's a humanoid or not. It's a kind of, it's a kind of dog dog-like man, although uh, give me an intelligence check as well. Let's check. just see. And wait, while, Mar while you're doing all that, Marshall's like, so are, yep. do you get a lot of good benefits working for the mod? I got a one. Not one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you've never seen anything like this before. Certainly not in past adventures, certainly not in caverns in Thay. <clears throat> nope, no idea. No idea what this thing is. It's some kind of beastie dog man. You think maybe a maybe a, a jackal wear or a lycanthrope of some kind, but um, but you're not sure even if that's a humanoid necessarily or not. How long have we been standing out here? The Oculus ah. is swirling <laughs> open again mm -hmm. at this point. And the second guard comes in Blind will see you now. Thank you very much. Uh, please, let's uh, lead us to him. This way. And I know, I know. Marshall, does, Marshall doesn't want to even put this back in the bag. I'm just holding it out the whole time. I worry about uh, it's handling it. Anymore. As you're holding it out, it is sort of, it is sort of twitching in in your hand. It's clear that something in there wants to get out. Mm -hmm. And finally, you lead through what seems like an endless sort of labyrinth of this complete, these completely smooth cylindrical tunnels. They branch at 90 degrees off to the right and then the left and the left and the right and down. And then some of them slope downward and others slope up. There are no stairs or anything like that, but you can tell you are changing depth uh, at various points as well as uh, turning uh, 90 degrees to the left and right uh, through these various uh, tunnels. Uh, it is dark, um, except for the torch that the, that the guard carries in front of you. Finally, he sets the torch in a holder, and another Oculus-like door swirls open, and you find that beyond there is a massive, circular, uh, cylindrical-shaped cavern. Uh, and all along the walls of this cavern, are carved stone shelves um, just going up levels and levels and levels and on these shelves are all manner of bizarre curiosities uh, some uh, living animals in cages of types you've never seen before uh, various artifacts some of which are levitating and clearly magical um, all kinds of scrolls and books piled just higgledy piggledy everywhere this is a kind of uh, collector's showroom, as it were. Uh, there, are, there are four great pillars in the center uh, of this room uh, holding it up, um, and they, uh, they end in, a, in joining arches. But at the center of the room, floating above it, is a huge sphere. The sphere has stalks out of which spring eyes, and the great eye at the center, just above its jagged 
tooth filled maw is completely coated over with the milky film of cataracts, as are every one of the eyes on each of its ten stalks. I am the blind. What have you brought me? Dear sir, we have been given the charge to bring you this item. It is an egg that seems to have some sort of mythical properties to it. An egg. You have brought me an egg. From yeah. Quigox. My good sir, that is true. Uh, you were expecting us, I believe? No? I was not ex... He sniffs. Hmm. Are you wearing perfume? Well, yes, I am. Do you like it? Reminds me of someone. Mm. Uh, my good sir, my name is uh, Gideon de Gilded. Uh, uh, I've uh, sent here by uh, Lord Oryx of the Zendarum to, to deliver this egg to you that uh, as requested. An egg from Quigox, you say? Mm -hmm. You are correct. Do you know what this means? The egg, begins, the egg begins twitching and vibrating in, in uh, Marshall's hand. Yeah, uh, Gideon looks a bit nervous towards um, Marshall. He, he's, yeah, it, it's just very odd, like they were not expected. Or what is this? Who would yeah. have wanted to? Yeah, <laughs> very suspicious. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have a table or something that can put this on? Set it down in front of me, human. All right, I'm gonna kneel down and put it down in front of me. Back away, I'm like, mm -hmm. kneeling is a good idea. <laughs> the egg begins twitching, and it is these cracks that were once sort of filigree and superficial begin to deepen. This means. If it is from Quigox, then I am a grandfather. Oh dear, congratulations. <laughs> the egg bursts open Man. and out from it, inflating like a giant fleshy blimp, comes a beholder that is exactly identical to the blind in every possible way. It is itself blind, coated over each of its eyes in cataracts. And as the two beholders levitate, facing each other, eye stalk to eye stalk, lining up, the blind then says, and now, we must fight to the death. And roll for initiative. Oh my god! What is happening? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, is it time for the, the, the Bardic Retreat Maneuver? <laughs> <laughs> it may well be. Mm -hmm. I got a 15 on initiative. 15 I a, for I getting a, uh, 19. A 19 for Marshall. Okay, we're going to go Marshall, then the blind, then Gideon, and then his grandchild is named Ilix, son of Quigox. Marshall, you are up first, first to notice that these two beholders are going to start randomly shooting at each other. You are in a large stone cavern. You know also that they do things like disintegrate stone and uh, um, freeze people and petrify people and 
uh, levitate them across the room when these eye stalks get going. Yeah. Um, run. <laughs> I'll tell Gideon. Oh, mind if I do? Can can I, just, right. I just want to turn around and get out of there as best I can. Okay, uh, you're gonna you're gonna race toward the the entrance, yeah. uh, to the, toward uh, where you where you came from. Um, the um, the Oculus has swirled shut mm-hmm. behind you while you were parlaying with the blind. So you are there, uh, okay. right at the Oculus. Um, oh, so like the door is closed. The door is closed to this chamber. Okay. Uh, 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 um. Exactly. Do I know? Do I know what kind of creature? Can I see if I can know what kind of creature the blind is, like like classification? Uh, I'm oh, okay. sure. Yeah, spell. yeah, sure. Yeah. What kind of creature it would be? Yeah. Okay. Give me a nature check. I mean, I have dealt with it before, but I don't know. Yeah. Nature. Just flat twelve. Flat twelve. Okay. It's definitely a monster, not a humanoid. You know that much for sure, but what kind of monster with a 12? You don't know exactly. Crap. A dangerous one. A dangerous one. You know that much. Because what I wanted to do was to cast Magic Circle. Like, it would give us time. I figure we could, like, if I can cast that, and it'll go, it just get, it basically says choose one of the following types Celestial, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, or Undead. And then I can pick how I want it to, to choose, but I don't know what it is, and I don't want to do that then, because I might just waste it. Um, in that case, I do have another one, I think. What I'm going to do, actually, is just get to the door and see if I could just start trying to figure out how to get the door open. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to cast um, Bless on me and Gideon, just in case. All right, bless on you and Gideon. And with yeah. your bonus, you're going to start trying to figure out how to open this door. Give me an arcana mm-hmm. check, just as you have a look at the runes carved around the edge of the doorway. It's 18. 18's pretty good for a start. Um, you're starting to figure out how you think this thing could open. The blind is next. And the blind... Uh, Fires off. Um, well, heck, why don't you do it? Gideon, why don't you give me a D10? Yep. Mm. It's my D10 speed, yeah. Okay. Seven. Seven. All right. Um, it's a, a cone. So um, the blind attempts to. Um, one of its eye stalks fires off at, at Elix, its grandchild. Um, and uh, everyone can give me a wisdom save. Uh, um, I would like to try to cast Counter Spell, my new spell. All right. Um, no idea what level I should cast it at. Uh, I guess a third? Uh, yeah. Uh, give, me, um, give me a nature check before you do that. Right. Um, uh, 19. 19 is good enough. You know that this is a magical effect rather than a spell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Won't work then. Save your slot. Save your slot. All right. Give me those wisdom saves. Uh, wisdom. Oh, no. What is it with my dice this evening? No. Oh boy. This is not good. Uh, no, you, you, you guidance me, but it's, uh, you blessed me, did you? You're I not? blessed you. Yeah, yeah but your, the, your guidance in blessed. Yeah, guidance only lasts a minute, but it, it's not going to work anyway. I think. Hmm. I got a natural twenty, Robert. Okay. And Gideon. With my bless, uh, eight. An eight. Mm-hmm. Gideon. Not only poisoned, you start. Well, sorry, you're no longer poisoned. No. You start feeling very, very sleepy indeed. This whole thing feels like a weird, bad dream as these two enormous eye stalk laden beasts hover above you, and you see everything fade to black as uh, Marshall she, he slumps. As a half elf, uh, magic can't put elf, me. 
can't, magic can't put me to sleep, but is it magic or? It is magical in nature. And so you become drowsy, but you remember, you hear in the distance the sound of elven singing. Was it your mother's side or your father's side, the elves, the elven? Mother's side. Mother's side. As though your mother's voice were calling to you, wake up, Gideon. It's not time yet. And you snap out of it. Neither you nor Marshall nor Elix at this point have been affected by the sleep ray. Gideon, you are up. Mm -hmm. Still on your feet for now. Yeah. We need to get out of here immediately. And he turns around um, and runs towards the door. Is, is, can I get to the door? You can, yes. You Both you and Marshall can get to the door. Um, Marshall is already um, underway attempting to decode uh, this thing. Um, mm -hmm. And you, if you want to, you can aid him in trying to figure out how to get this door open. Uh, excuse me, Father Marshall, and uh, Gideon uh, mutters an invitation and casts a spell. <laughs> uh, and he's casting knock on the door. <laughs> he wants to get out immediately. If he can. All right, knock. What do we got? Knock is a great old fashioned well, I haven't heard knock in wizard a spell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a, I think that's been uh, If it's a mundane lock, it is, uh, yeah, it's unstuck or unlocked. Yeah. Uh, arcane lock is dispelled for 10 minutes, but... Uh... And during which time the card will be open and shut normally. Okay, a loud knock emanates from the target. And boom. 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 And the swirling, interconnected nature of, the, of this Oculus-like door relaxes. So the arcane lock that was holding it locked has been released. You are still going to need to kind of prize it open from there and make your way through. <laughs> At this point, Elix um, circles around. So um, the, um, the blind and Elix are sort of circling each other. It's difficult to keep track <laughs> of who is actually who at this stage. Um, they're kind of weaving in and out of columns and shooting out of their um, tentacles from their eyeballs. Um, Ilix um, is going to... Uh, well, Marshall, give me a d10. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you roll last time, Randy? Uh, seven, I think. Right. Three. Three. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, and at this point, um, <laughs> having swirled around... I think it's going to just be uh, Marshall, who is caught um, in this ray. Uh, give me a wisdom save. Are you still body inspired? I don't think so. No, I used it. Okay. Sixteen. One six. Sixteen is just enough. And... <sighs> The same weird, eerie feeling that washed over you in the nibbling quipper washes over you in full force now, for it is the fear ray of Ilix. But now you know its tricks, and you are steadfast in your resolve to keep your head, your wits about you and get out of this place. You are up next. Um, I am just going to do my darndest to try to if maybe me and Gideon can try to work together to pry this door open. All right. Uh, yeah, working together. So if you want to defer your aid action, that will yeah. give either you or Gideon advantage. I'll defer it to Gideon's Gideon. turn. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So on Gideon's turn, whoever has the has the better strength athletics can roll at advantage. Get this door open and get the heck out of here. Um, but while I'm throwing down, I'm like. Ugh. Eric, you just had to eat all these pigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only you had a really big, strong guy right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, Gideon, give me a D10. Blind is up next. A three again. A three again. Okay. Um, and this time the ray affects you, Gideon. Uh, you can't be put to sleep by magical means. Can you be made afraid? I think you can. It's just sleep and yep. charming. Give me a wisdom save. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, 18. 18 is enough. You are also steadfast in your resolve, although these two bizarre um, 
flesh spheres are circling around each other, knocking into the columns. Bits of the ceiling are beginning to fall and, and silt at your feet. Uh, they're knocking uh, these incredible artifacts off the shelves. Uh, cages are breaking and weird two-headed birds are flying around, flapping within the cavern. Oh, but you are undeterred in your resolve to get out of there in a dignified fashion. So now, Gideon, you are up, uh, and between you and Marshall, whoever has this better strength athletics can roll at advantage. It would not be This is a big, heavy stone oculus that you need to prize open. That's and minus one strength. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, with advantage? You get advantage because you're being yeah. aided by your good buddy, Marshall. Mm -hmm. I needed that. <laughs> it is not great. Uh, 12. 12. Okay, 12 is not uh, enough. Uh, so you... Um, you are both go like pulling in the past your <laughs> flexing, yeah. But you're thinking Lorana might be right, that you're not exactly cut out for strength work. Um, where's Eric when you need him? Yeah. Where's this guy? Yeah, both of you are just like, where is this guy? <laughs> Elix is up next. Uh, Marshall, give me a D10. <laughs> I, love, I love having you guys roll your own face. It's so much more fun than me doing it. Uh-oh. Uh, not <laughs> nine. poison. Nine. Oh dear God. Okay. Um, poison and, is actually poison. Okay. Um, okay. And at this point, I'm going to say. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Gideon, my dear, you need to give me a dexterity savings throw. No problem. No problem. Mm -hmm. I got this. I got this. You're pretty at <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, uh, 21. Not a problem. <clears throat> the ray, uh, you managed to dodge out of, uh, off, uh, away from a ray that Ilix fires uh, toward uh, the blind. Uh, the blind um, also succeeds on its save. Um, and as you dodge, you notice um, that the wall behind you completely disintegrates and a, a, a completely circular hole is created, uh, leading to another passageway. Um, it is the exact same size and shape as the tunnels you have been walking down. Um, and all that remains of what was thick, thick stone is a fine pile of ash. The entire thing has been disintegrated in a, about a 10 foot diameter. And it just sizzles. <laughs> Marshall, you're up. Uh, I'll point. Can I point out to Gideon that there's a hole there, and maybe we should go for that one. How far away mm -hmm. is it from us? Um, it is. Yeah, Gideon just dodged out of the way. It is just just right next to this door that you've been getting be, okay. been trying to prize open. Um, however, it does appear to be a different tunnel than than the tunnel you came out of, which well, led straight it, up to the it's, chamber. It, as long as it's not this room, I'll mm -hmm. take it. <laughs> My thoughts. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Marshall. I'm, can I, can I, um, I'm going to cast, cast Bless on us one more time just to re, re get that back up there. Mm -hmm. And then um, okay. run through that hole. And as you go to cast Bless... Uh, you succeed. You know one of the eyes of the beholder is sweeping like a lighthouse with this field of anti-magic, mm -hmm. but fortunately uh, you manage to um, duck under it and not be affected, and you do cast Bless on you and your companion, and you off. You are gone. You are down through that beautiful, smooth stone tunnel, running like your life depends on it, because guess what? It does. It does. <laughs> Okay, the blind is up next, and uh, Gideon, give me a, give me a D10. Mm -hmm. Six. Six, okay. Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a, a, a strength savings throw. I, uh, could I use your bless? Yeah, for, uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> no, this is not going to work. Uh, um, what is that? Uh, six. Six is not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, you are um, caught up in a ray that was meant 
uh, for Ilix the blind casts out a ray, the same ray, in fact, that scattered those three thugs in the nibbling quipper earlier. You are lifted up off your feet, two feet into the air, and thrown across the room. Mm -hmm. uh, you land um, against the wall on the far side of the room, and you, my dear, are going to take 12 points of bludgeoning damage as you crash against the wall. Um, you are now... Um, you are now 60 feet from that hole that the thing has created, and you are up. Mm -hmm. Like, Marshall, oh. start, Marshall will start running down the hall and then, like, stop. Like, where's Kitty? <laughs> uh, you're a so, thud. You hear a thumping yeah, sound. The, yeah, sound yeah. Of a, the, the sound of a foppish bard hitting hard stone, basically. <laughs> you hear at this point. Yeah. A classic uh, thud. Classic. <laughs> always, always. Uh, so I think uh, as you turn to, to look, uh, I, I'm, I, my intention is that I would like to cast um, Dimension Door and Teleport right next to, to uh, Marshall. Yes. Okay. Uh, you don't have to see the location. No. Um, you just have to kind of know. Yeah, I, I saw the entrance, so I would, I would like to teleport myself to the entrance at least. To the entrance. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can see the entrance. You can definitely go there. Uh, any other spot within range? Visualize or describe. Yeah, I just you probably don't want you just want to make sure you don't teleport into solid stone kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you teleport your way right up to the entrance. You are right at the entrance um, of this passageway. Um, it leads down and then takes a sharp ninety degrees to the left from there. Uh, Marshall has hesitated and is looking back around the corner. You catch each other's eye. And there's one final blast from Ilix. Uh, Marshall, roll it up. Uh-oh. How much can we take uh, of this? <laughs> seven. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, and with that, ooh. Uh, with that, you hear, um, yeah, you feel passing, wafting by you, um, Gideon. The um, the effects of the sleep ray, which you are immune to. Mm. And so with that, the two of you can make your way down into the labyrinthine tunnels of the blind's lair. Neither the blind nor Ilix will pursue you. They're much more interested in fighting to the death to see <laughs> who will be who will remain the the uh, the blind. Uh, in Skullport. But you are now in a, um, in a bizarre place. These darkened cylindrical tunnels like pipes made of stone. Um, and there is no light source. So Gideon, I believe you have dark vision, but Marshall, um, it, is, it is dark in this particular passageway. I'll, I'll try to light a torch. Okay, and you can do so. Um, and the walls are sort of flickering and smooth. Um, you're gonna, what is your strategy for figuring out how to get out of here? Yeah, that's a good I question. Know. I mean, I, <laughs> I do not want to go back into that room. No, I'd rather be here than uh, where we were. Yeah. Not disturb the, the family reunion. I <clears throat> am curious as to how we found ourselves in this situation. I don't... Uh, it does you suspect sound... foul play? I definitely suspect something a little more heavy-handed than we were led to believe. I don't know. It's hard to see when you're dealing with Skullport and creatures like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I will be having a long conversation uh, with uh, Lord Onyx uh, when I, once I return. And Marshall, can I look down and see if like, I see any... Like, it's just Is it just tunnels, Robert, or is it just rooms or it's, a it's all door. tunnels at this point you've not found another room or chamber these tunnels um just just cut through one another at, at straight perfect sort of 90 degree angles uh, some of them joining in t's some of them joining in crosses some of them simply turning 90 degrees to left or right well we can just try to traverse these tunnels to hopefully we find something or we can sit and wait until a winner is declared. 
The ones were out of range. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Mm. Well, uh, let us proceed down this tunnel. I'll, I will um, write some markings so we wish, make sure not to um, cross our own paths. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Father Marshall, I, I feel sorry for having put you, put you into, into this predicament. Uh, it was, yeah. I, I'm not worried. I do not think that uh, anything that you've done here has been by your own hand or your own choice. I can see mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. your conscience is clear, my friend. If uh, we held each other accountable for every situation that we found ourselves in, then, well, then we'd be in a different kind of job. <laughs> You're a noble man, Father Marshall. Um, let us uh, make sure that we get uh, we get out of here, and then uh, uh, I'll buy you a drink. Yeah, and then I will listen to a lot of people not want to hear the story of this story, the song of this story. <laughs> <laughs> And right, I'll Marshall, you're in forget. you're in the lead, and yeah, uh, Gideon, you're you're doing markings to make sure you don't double back. And this place just twists and turns. Uh, Marshall, what are you thinking? You can give me an intelligence check. You can give me um, uh, what are you thinking by way of skills that might help you get out of here? Uh, the only thing I can think of do as a cleric with no love mm -hmm. for nature or tracking is to pray. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. Give me a religion. Give me a, a religion check as you simply pray. Meanwhile, Gideon, uh, you're marking the tunnels to make sure you don't uh, double back there. Yeah. It's kind of a survival-y type thing. <laughs> um, got any proficiency with survival or those kind nope. of things? All right. Nope. Give, me, give me an intelligence check anyway, uh, or, a wisdom, or a wisdom check, wisdom survival or intelligence I got mm -hmm. a um, unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. Calling for Osiris to give me a vision or a path. 22. Survival. 22. Well done. Okay. You're not going to double back at any point, but you keep, you keep progressing straight. Uh, and as you do, ahead of you, um, momentarily, um, you see um, sort of hieroglyphs. The glyphs of Osiris, uh, beautiful birds and other symbols uh, of the passage between life and death. And you feel, in fact, as though you were being guided from this dark place into the light, even as children are guided out in birth, and even as those who are taken into the ethereal planes are guided from this dark world into the light. And so between you, between your excellent penmanship on the calligraphic markings that you're making and marshal your divine guidance from Osiris, you find what you are sure to be the other side of the entranceway. It is once again one of these sort of stone oculuses, um, and you know or you suspect that there are two guards on the other side of that door, although this side of the door uh, is unguarded. Osiris has guided us to this door. I believe this is a way out, but if the blind can holds up the way that he has, there might be guards out there. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if they'll take kindly to a couple of strangers walking out of their masters. Well, we will just be uh, uh, the conversation has ended, and we'll just be uh, believing. Don't you think they will just let it pass? Yeah, I, I guess so. We can, I mean, we'll see what happens. We got to mm -hmm. get this door open first. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can try knocking. Can I hit it with the torch? Just to see <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's you can, hit, knock on the you door. can hit it with a torch. <laughs> give me a, give me a. We almost never do these. Give me a Constitution check to see how hard you can hit <laughs> this thing and how persistent you can be to try and get the attention of the guards on the other side. Nineteen. Nineteen is pretty good. And as you go pounding on this massive door, much to your great surprise and pleasure, you see a little hole of light, a little 
column of light comes streaming through into the chamber and it, it it gets larger and larger and finally the oculus opens and never before have you been so pleased to smell the waft <laughs> of the sulfuric air of Skullport as the two dark hooded figures turn and look at both of you and one of them says have you completed your business with the blind? We have, good sir. Thank you very much uh, for your service. We'll be leaving now. Very well. And they stare at you with their beady red eyes the entire remaining distance down <laughs> the tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, you see the silhouette of a small uh, girl. It is, in fact, a statue of a girl in ragged clothing, her mouth open mid-speech. And you recall that Malark is still petrified. I, where can the guards see that, or are we past the guards to really get uh, you're, you're a good ways down the passageway, but you, um, you might want to just duck around a corner just yeah. to make sure. <laughs> well, what I want to do is see if I can, I don't know, take how heavy is the statue uh, you know it's a statue of a girl so it is actually you could probably heft it up um, yeah i don't want to i don't want to leave her here i feel regardless of how i feel about her i don't want to leave her to this fate so my intention is to see if i can find someone to help okay with this curse in her. all mm -hmm. right okay and so you um you take the statue of malark with you mm -hmm. Carrying it under my arm. Carrying it yeah. under, under one arm. Well, that was like quite like, a... Well, this is this is what it's like in Skullport, Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it's a curious place. I uh, I do hope that I won't be seeing it anytime soon. Yeah, so. I hear you. <laughs> so the light plays out over the water, over the black water of Skullport. And with the statue of a small thieving girl under one arm and the memory of two enormous fleshy beholders staring each other down, eye stalk to eye stalk, and fighting to the death sight that probably no one else in the world has ever lived to tell about, <laughs> you see the welcome sight in the distance of Warren Barron's submarine, his apparatus of qualish surface and the hatch pop and he pops out this deep gnome and he says to you good time in Skullport then let us never speak of Skullport again what's what's the saying I hear up in the surface what happens in Skullport stays in Skullport fair enough hop in and I think we'll leave there for today's adventure. <laughs> <laughs> he survived. Oh, I that wasn't was so cool. entirely sure with that one whether or not you would. <clears throat> <laughs> ah, well played. Well, well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. I wanted to, uh, yeah. So that one, I wanted to try out um, a mechanic I'm testing out that I call the countdown timer. So in addition to having these three acts like investigating Skullport, meeting up with the blind, and the fact that they're, they're going to rumble, um, I wanted to have this impending sense that, you know, that, that the clock was ticking and that something was going to happen. So, so the signaling there was one of the rays was going to go off at very particular timings. So exactly 15 mm -hmm. minutes in, 30 minutes in, 60 minutes in, and then you actually hit the 80 minute mark right when um, right when you met the blind himself. So it was actually perfect timing because the, the creature was going to hatch anyway, uh, oh. no matter what. <laughs> so. it, it, seemed, it seemed very perfect, like cinematic, almost like put it down and it instantly like, popped up. Yeah. And, then he, and then he said that thing and it just started happening. Mm -hmm. like, what? Yeah. God. <laughs> so rad. So I rad. mean, imagine if that popped up in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah. It could have. It could have. Yeah, at the 80-minute oh. mark, no matter what, it would hatch 
it would attack mm -hmm. you guys for a round and then it would go straight searching for grandpa to try, to try <laughs> to <kill him. laughs> so yeah i did a little bit holder lore beforehand and apparently beholders dream their offspring into existence so this egg was containing the dream of his his offspring quigox who then seeking revenge against his grandfather by giving giving him his own grandchild so uh, <laughs> Pretty, yeah. pretty hilarious. So how did you? How did, what did you think of the? Of we did a lot of rolls. We did a lot of skill checks in this one. Did that? Did that feel? Yeah, I, I mean, I think reasonable? going into it knowing that we had one person down, and then maybe would yeah. it be just like a lot, not a lot of hack and slash element to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that I think you kind of really it kind of modified to the party comp, mm -hmm. and it worked out. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like. I like the chase sequence, you know, because like the mm -hmm. way to figure out how to do the chasing, and then of course everything just trying to avoid all the stuff. With the yeah, yeah, I was, I, I was, I came, I came into this game that like trying to avoid combat, like like trying yeah. to talk it out or something yeah. like that, and then uh, we have two beholders in front of us in, in a death match, and I mean we just have to go. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Not right. sticking I, around for this. I, I think once you started like really chatting people up in the in there and start just walking in there and start playing I'm like all right let's play it a little different let's just kind of talk to people and stuff mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even trying to avoid the fights but uh yeah the one fight is the, the two. i, the I mean you were really... on your own i mean the kid got distracted by this but it's uh yeah. by this girl of course and then uh yeah you were so sidetracked <laughs> kind of left you hanging there i'm sorry nah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> my wingman i lost my wingman yeah. oh totally well great well this is great certainly great great fun for me just to watch this new kind of mechanic um play out hopefully it, it kept you guys on the edge of your seat you know to yeah uh, i wonder how it works i mean um is it like in real time that you're you're, you're counting the exactly. minutes I'm, and we were just I'm, talking and and, and that little girl spot. she just kept talking that was a random <laughs> role that was a random npc um nice. all i had was her name and the fact that she um she talks she talks out her thoughts out loud that's, mm -hmm. that's all i had so i just kind of I kind of went with it, and that's um, good. they're fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so fun when you see something land and you go, "Okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna bring how am I gonna bring this character into the yeah. story?" So it's probably the fourth fourth orphan that we bring out of Skullport. <laughs> that's right. You guys, <laughs> that's right. You guys have brought up one, two, half orc, all kinds uh, of orphans out of Skullport. This one, unfortunately, is going to require a greater restoration spell, which is going to either set you back a few coin or you have to call in a favor from the Temple of Osiris to get get her back on her feet, and uh, maybe introduce her to Jane. I don't know. Maybe she. Maybe she could yeah, learn her thing to mentor her. Yeah. Another campaign. <laughs> anyway, no, yes. it was really cool. I, I had a lot of fun. It was yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm, right. It's great. <laughs> right. Well, thank you guys. Well played. Um, for those of you tuning in, just a reminder to please uh, follow and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. We we do this on uh, Wednesdays um, on Twitch and um, and then we we stream over on YouTube and. Um, yeah, thanks for playing along. It's great fun. See you next time. Bye, everyone.